Hey everyone, this is James from here from the Dev Genie Academy, and in this week's episode, we're looking at multiple lighting. So without further ado, let's begin. First of all, we need to start in the Shader Management class, where we can create a set uniform function, which is the string uniform name and the point light array of point lights. We can then do an int number lights equals point light not equal to null, and we can set that to either the point light dot length or zero. Next, we can make a for loop of int i equals zero, i is less than num lights, i plus plus. Inside of the loop, we can then do a set uniform of the uniform name, the point light sub i, and also i as the third parameter. And this is going to cause us errors, so we need to then create this function. So it's a public void set uniform, which consists of a string uniform name, a point light, point light, there we go and also in int of position. So in here, we can then call another set uniform function of the uniform name plus open square brackets, the position and close square brackets. And after that, we can just pass the point light in there. So we need to do the same thing again, but for the spotlight. So again, it's a set uniform with the string uniform name of spotlight. I'll just make that a list this time. So spotlight list and spotlight. We can also get the length of the number of lights in the spotlight list by calling spotlight doesn't equal null. And if it doesn't equal null, then we can do spotlight.length or zero. Then again, we do the same fall it was done in the previous one. So int i equals zero. i is less than the num lights and i plus plus. And again, it's similar again. We can call a function that we haven't created yet of set uniform, of uniform name spotlight sub i and i as the third parameter and again we need to then create this function so it's a public void set uniform and it's a string of uniform name spotlight there we go spotlight spotlight and the int of the position so we can then call our normal function from here of uniform name plus open square bracket pos and close square brackets and just pass the spotlight in as the final parameter. So next up we need to create these point light and spotlight lists. So we can create a public void create point light list uniform which takes in a string of uniform name and an integer of the size of the list itself. And obviously we need to throw an exception on here just in case there is any errors to capture. So we can do a for of int i equals zero, i is less than size i plus plus pretty standard for loop. From here, we can call our previously created create point light uniform function. The only addition we need to do is a open square bracket of i and the closing square bracket to finish it off. But we can now copy this function down and change it so it creates the spotlight list uniform. So create spotlight list uniform, there we go, and change the function inside of the for loop to create spotlight uniform as well. If I can find it, spotlight uniform, there it is. There we go. So that should be us done with the shader manager class. Moving into the render manager class, the first thing we want to do in the render method, instead of having individual point and spotlights, we need to change that to a list. Then we'll change the variable to spotlights and point lights accordingly as well. This is going to cause errors to the two set uniforms we already have. Now we can create an integer of num lights. That's going to equal initially to spotlight doesn't equal null. And this is either going to equal to spotlight.length or zero, depending on if it's null or not. We can then create a for loop of int i equals zero. i is then less than num lights. And then we can increment i each iteration of the loop. So we can then do shader.setUniform. And we need to say this is spotlights now. And we can pass in the spotlight list. So spotlights sub i and i for the position as well. There we go. So we can get rid of those two errorsome lines. And if we copy the four lines of code that we've just created, paste it in there, get rid of the redeclaration of num lights, and change everything from spotlight to point light. There we go. And we need to change the variable name of spotlights to point lights. 
we can also change that to point lights as well. So now we've got our individual point lights being set. So in the init method, we need to change the point light to point lights. And we need to change the function name to create point light list uniform and create spotlight list uniform. And the size of this is going to be a maximum of five per list. And this is everything we need to do in the render manager class. So we can come out of that and go into the test game. We can change point light to a point light list here as well and change the variable name to point lights and spotlights. This will present some errors in the code, but we can address these now. First of all, in the init method, where we've got point light equals a new point light, what we can do is we can create the point light as a local variable. So point light, point light equals a new point light. And the same thing for the spotlight as well. Just after we've done the directional light, we can say point lights equals a new point light list. And from here, we can add the po local point light into that point light list. And we can do the same thing for spotlight as well. So we can say spotlights equals a new spotlight list. And we can just add the local spotlight variable to that list as well. And just to test to make sure that multiple lighting is working, let's create a second spotlight called spotlight one. And we can make that equal to a new spotlight of the current point light and the current cone direction and cutoff. So it's a complete duplicate of our current spotlight that we've got in place. From here, we can then just add the spotlight into, or the new spotlight into our spotlights list. We can now move on into the input method. So where we've got the light pos equals spotlight, we can change that spotlight to spotlights sub zero. So the first spotlight in that list. So you add the S there as well, there we go. And we can copy that and paste it in the other errorsome areas of the input method. And in the update method, we can do the same thing here as well by changing spotlight to spotlight sub zero. So getting the first spotlight in that list. And the last thing we need to do in the render method, we need to change point light to point lights and spotlight to spotlights. That's everything that we need to do in the test game class. So now moving into the fragment shader, First things first, we need to create two constant integers, one for the max point lights, which will initialize to five, and another one for the max spotlights, which again will be initialized to five. So after that, in our uniforms, we need to change those from static variables into lists. And we can do this by changing point light into point lights, and we can then add the square brackets, and inside of the square brackets, we can say max point lights, and the same thing for spotlights as well. We can say square brackets of max spotlights. So everything we need to do now is in the main function. So first we can do a for loop again, which is int i equals zero, and i is less than max spotlights. Um, actually, let's do max point lights first, because we already got that first in the list. So max point lights and i plus plus. We can then wrap the calc point light call in the for loop. But what about if we've got point lights that only go up to one or two, and we are having a list of five? We can check this by doing if point lights sub i dot intensity, so point lights sub i dot intensity, if that's greater than zero, then we know that there is a point light to be rendered to the screen. So we can then wrap that if statement in the calc point light bit as well. So we need to do another for loop for our max spotlights. So it's the same again of int i equals zero, i is less than max spotlights, and i plus plus. We then wrap the calc spotlight into the for loop, and we can do the same call again pretty much, but we can do now if spotlight sub i of the point light dot intensity is greater than zero, then again we know there's a spotlight to render to the screen. Actually, I've spotted an error here. So in point, instead of doing point light, we need to call point lights sub i, and the same for spotlights sub i as well, but that should get us going. Before we launch the application, let's just make sure that all three of these lights aren't just rendered on top of each other. So in spotlight, I've copied the point light that we've currently got, and I've just changed the position to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and negative 3.6. The point light itself, I'm gonna change that to negative 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5, and negative 3.2. So that should now give us three light sources rendered to the same cube. So we've got our point light at the bottom left hand corner. We've got our original spotlight that's moving in the center and our second spotlight in the top right hand corner. Thanks very much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed 
and I'll see you next week. Thank you.